But let's see here. We had the three parts there in Revelation chapter 11. We had the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, they love not their lives unto the death. Let's see the way to define that in the Pauline epistles. Philippians 1, verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. That's your, your prayer if you're a Christian. No matter what happens to you, you want to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ with your life. Verse 21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose, I sh what not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. We'll get back to that. <laughs> Verse 25, And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Okay, <laughs> I mean, wow, words to live by for me. It's, an, it's a great encouragement, you know, to know that I'm going through some of the same stuff that Paul went through, only in a new level of technology and things here in these end times. Uh, there are so many times I have, I mean, I've gotten so down at times, I'm just like begging the Lord, just take me home, please. I just, I can't stand this down here anymore. And it's like the Lord says, yeah, what about your wife and your son? <sighs> yeah, that's true. i got to be here to take care of them, you know. I need to provide for my own so that I don't deny the faith and end up worse than an infidel, First Timothy chapter 5. You know, and it's like, what about the body of Christ? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, it's not that I don't enjoy ministry. Please don't understand that. But, it, you know, it gets miserable sometimes here in this life as a Christian. I have joy in, in throughout the time, but it's just like, uh, you know, you go through things. Paul went through things. You're going through things. You know, I don't say that I'm the king of suffering. I'm not. I'm thankful for that. You know, um, some of you suffer a lot worse than I do. But we all have these different things that we go through. And all of us, it would be better for us to be dead and with Christ. But yet, it's more needful that we abide in the flesh for one another. For your furtherance and joy of faith. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. I know a lot of you say, boy, I really look forward to your sermons. Praise the Lord for that. You know, I mean, I can't say everybody out there is always growing and learning from my studies. I think some people just watch me for entertainment. Um, but a lot of you, it's it means something to you. And it's a challenge to you. And you challenge me. And I appreciate that. It's not just all you know, you taking from me. No, I take from you too. I get things from you. I, you know, I get people sending me stuff and send me things in the mail and, 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 you know, letters and things and saying, Hey, did you ever think about this? And I'm going, wow, that's really good. People send me articles and, and links to this. And did you watch this? Or did you hear about that? I love being part of the body of Christ. I need you just as much as you need me. You see, what is that? Love not their lives unto the death. Whatever happens to me, I'm not going to ever depart from Christ and say, hey, I'm going back to the world. I'm not going to love my life, you see, here on this earth and forsake the things of the Lord. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is an important thing to remember. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, showed you those verses, and by the word of their testimony, you have a changed life when you truly get saved, and they love not their lives unto the death. It is not about my life, it is not about my um, agenda or whatever else. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. You're a servant of Jesus Christ if you've been saved. Okay. It's not about you know, loving your life down here on this earth, you can enjoy things, sure, absolutely. Of course you can. But if you're forsaking that ministering to the saints, um, there's a problem there. I mean, uh, I'm just going to be honest with you about some things. And another thing I need uh, prayer on, um, we've been getting some really weird hack type of stuff happening. Um, some really odd, and I don't mean Hiles Anderson College, although that's always an issue too, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, 
um, my website every day uh, for a while there um, we were getting Russian spam you know sudden and such you know name at blah blah, blah dot ru and it's all in Russian and it's like got website links and stuff to it on the guest book and I'm going okay um, and I'd you know delete it and mark it as spam and whatever else and and you know whatever um, and finally I was just like you know I'm getting this and I'm getting these people attacking me personally and and just over and over and over again and I'm like okay you know what I'm shutting the guest book down for a while I'm just I hid the page the page is hidden on my website for a week or so and somehow the Russians are getting back into my hidden guest book page and putting spam into the guest book page while the page is hidden and I'm thinking okay um, I get on to YouTube here and recently I go and I'm looking at the comments and you go down so far and it says show more and I click on it and it goes it's like a little loading thing and it goes back to show more I'm like okay I click on it again show more I'm not, I can't even see all the comments I go to reply to some people uh, people that I haven't blocked or people that haven't blocked me and I push reply and nothing happens approving comments there are people that'll put a link or in or something like that I go into it says some comments not appearing because they need to be approved or whatever else you know they could likely be spam and I go in there never had a problem before never an even an, an, an issue and I've had people writing very nice comments and they get stuck into the into the spam type of a thing there in YouTube and I go in to approve the comment I'm like well there's nothing wrong with this comment I go to click the you know the little box there and you click that and it says approve I can't do it and I've seen some of you on there going are you deleting my comments there's a lot of stuff I can't control on my channel uh, there's some people that don't like what I'm saying and I've seen this thing before with people that have administrator type of abilities and things and, and passwords that are getting into my account and messing around with it and I think part of the reasoning is there that they figure if they can get you upset making you think that I'm deleting your comments then they can you can say well Brian's not a very nice guy he's deleting my comments doesn't even read most of them and he's deleting my comments I don't know if I want to subscribe to this guy I'm not doing it all right I'm not doing that Right, so I just wanted to make that little statement there because um, I'm seeing this thing happening again I mean my views uh, I, it's not about numbers for me but I mean I a while back I, I said that there was 80,000 views got knocked off my channel in one night you know I mean I see people that are that have you know videos that are you know millions of views and stuff like this and I'm like I got I think my biggest view count on, on one video is like 180 some thousand views you know and I've been on YouTube you know this will be my uh, ninth year on YouTube tenth year in ministry because I started 2007 uh, not on YouTube but making the DVDs and things but it's weird it's really really weird stuff but um, I don't love you know if I loved my life and was just like you know what I'm gonna just go do my own thing I'd drop this whole thing. I would. I'd just walk away from YouTube and say it's not worth the headache. Um, you know, it's a real headache sometimes. But I'm here because of you. Um, and, you know, not only just you, me feeding you, but you feeding me. I enjoy your friendship. And again, please don't be insulted if I'm not writing back all the time because I deal with a lot of people. Plus, I have my life and everything else going on there. But, uh, Let's continue. Verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. I like that verse. That's a good one. Because you see the devil, I can't say that he knows the exact day of the catching away of the bride of Christ. I don't know. I think that that could be something that God is kind of keeping secret and the devil's kind of earnestly watching and going like, you know, waiting to see, you know, is he, okay, it's not yet. Well, no, okay, I guess it's not yet. I don't exactly know how it all works up there in eternity. But the fact of the matter is the devil can be looking down at this world and he can be going, okay, things are really getting good for my system, but uh, I know what the book of Revelation says. I don't have much longer to go. 
I mean, if, uh, if the rapture happens this year, I don't know, just say this, um, it could be that I'm not sure the exact timing here of all this, you know, there's debate on that. Again, I'm not going to get into all that stuff. But uh, the devil could be looking at a very short time before he's kicked out of heaven. And, uh, you know, you say, well, he'd probably enjoy that. Well, I don't think so. I think heaven is such an amazing, wonderful place that being kicked down to this earth, that's why Paul, he went up there, he saw it. You know, again, see the study, the other study in Revelation chapter 12, but Paul was up there, he saw it. He was caught up to the third heaven, and he saw things up there, it was just like, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, Paul talked about. It's so wonderful up there that to come back down here to the earth is just like, uh, you know, and the devil, when he, gets, when he gets kicked out of heaven and he comes down here, he's going to be very angry because he's not going to be able to walk around up there in that perfect climate. He's down here on this polluted planet and he's going to be real mad about that, very mad. Look at verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, look at this, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Who's the woman? Mary, the Catholic Church. No, Satan wouldn't persecute the Catholic Church. Who does he persecute? The nation of Israel. Uh, so why would a saved Christian persecute the nation of Israel? That's what Satan does. Persecuting the Jews as a people is satanic. You say, well, what should we do when they reject the gospel? Turn to Acts chapter 18. I'll show you what the proper Christian response is. Because I'll be quite frank with you. The Jews are some very extremely arrogant people. You know, all of them? Well, you know, a good number of them. I've watched some of the stuff that where the Jews attack Jesus Christ and they, they get downright very insulting. And there's a lot of hatred with those people. Um, they can say some pretty vile stuff. I've seen that. And I've seen Jews, you know, Orthodox Jews from New York City and things. I've, I've, I saw some, you know, different times over the years. I was in New York for a little bit um, visiting with different people and things. And, and, um, and they just, I mean, they treat you like you are an animal. And you try to witness to those people, they can get rather foul sometimes. Acts chapter 18, verses 5 and 6. Should you hate them? That's what the question is here. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. He loved the Jewish people. They were his people. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Did Paul say, okay, we need to just kill these Jews. They're just so wicked. No. Did Paul say, they have no right to the land. The church has replaced Israel. There is no more Israel. You're just wicked, satanic. You're the synagogue of Satan. No. He didn't say anything like that. Hey, um... Your blood be upon your own heads. I'm clean. I witness to you. You know, my uh, former Roman Catholic neighbor that's dead and in hell now, um, I wanted to witness to him for so long, but he was always drunk. I finally had my opportunity, and I witnessed to him. He cussed me out, and I said, you're going to end up in hell. I remember I went away from him, and, and I was... Uh, Going along, and I just I prayed, and I said, Lord, this was my chance. You gave me that opportunity, that door, where I was able to, to, to witness to him, tell him the gospel. He rejected. I washed my hands. His blood's no longer on me. You know, and I realized if he would have died, you know, just drunk and bum and stuff like that, I don't think the Lord would have held me guilty because he, told, he actually told me when I was witnessing to him that he'd been witnessed to by two other, you know, people over the years. And uh, so he had had chances before. But, um, you know, that's your proper response to a Jew that rejects Jesus Christ. Not, oh, I hate you. I hate these Jewish people. I just think these Jewish people should be wiped out. That's not the spirit of the Lord. And when you see a guy like Steven Anderson coming out and making his movie, his little propaganda film, Marching to Zion, you know, 
and he's translating in all these different languages. You know, hatred of the Jews. You know, forced conversion or uh, hatred. You know, it's what Catholicism has done to the Jews over the years. And don't think for one minute that it's not forced conversion either, by the way. So it's not forced conversion, he's showing love. If some Jew came along and said, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but uh, I'm not a Baptist and I'm not this and I'm not that, Andrew Snake would say, well, then you're not saved. You know he would. He's lost. Turn back to Revelation chapter 12. The Holy Spirit will never, ever inspire a Christian to hate the Jews as a people. Never. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And to the woman, Israel, there, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Go over to verse 6 of the same chapter. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Again, another proof that the book of Revelation is not chronological. All right, this isn't happening in verse 6, and then again over here in verse 14. Now it's describing the same event. All right, you have to get that thing. But uh, let's look here at Matthew chapter 24. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 24, this thing of the flight. I think this is kind of an interesting little tie in here. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 20. It says here, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Given two wings as like an eagle, that she can fly into the wilderness. Neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Who is the elect? Well, the people that uh, aren't supposed to be flying on the Sabbath day. Read Romans chapter 13, verse 9, and show me where we're supposed to keep the Sabbath day as Christians. We're not. Who's it talking to? The Jews. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. The woman in Revelation chapter 12 is Israel, not the church. The dragon gets kicked out of heaven when Christians are up there. Saints in heaven. Angels of God in heaven. We are as the angels of God in heaven. We're in heaven. The devil gets kicked out. He comes down and he persecutes the woman, Israel. There are no clear scriptures approve a pre trib rash. I just like, are you kidding me? You don't read any of the Pauline epistles then, or you know, compare scripture with scripture. It's crystal clear. God has a plan for the Jews. Back to Revelation chapter twelve. Revelation chapter 12, we're in verse 15 now. It says here, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Very interesting. What is this flood? Well, let's go back first of all to Daniel, the book of Daniel. The two most prophetic books concerning the time of Jacob's trouble the events of it are Daniel and Revelation. And if you're a Jew watching this, compare, get a New Testament, King James Bible, don't mess with the Catholic ones, King James Bible, and uh, compare Revelation and Daniel. Interesting study. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince shall come that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, de uh, desolations are determined. Okay? So, you see the flood there again in the book of Daniel. Again, another, there's so many scriptures that tie Daniel and Revelation together. Uh, the New Testament is not some heretical book written by Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics did not write uh, the New Testament. Uh, the New Testament speaks against Roman Catholicism. All right? Revelation chapter 17. We'll be getting to that in a couple of weeks. But let's go to Revelation chapter 17. 
I'm saying the expository study. We are going to Revelation 17 just to show you one verse. What is this flood thing all about? Well, I'll give you a little theory here. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Because you read back in Daniel chapter 9, it's talking about war in connection to this flood. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, the whore is Roman Catholicism, the mother church, you know, the queen of heaven, see? Where the whore sitteth, this, these waters, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The vast hordes of Roman Catholicism. That is compared to water in these great waters that the woman sits upon in Revelation 17. So here's my theory. It could be an actual thing of, of water and things like that, you know. Um, but I think it's actually people. I think it's going to be a Roman Catholic end times army that's going to rise up, that's there, they're worshiping the beast and the false prophet, the whole system of Roman Catholicism there, and with the actual final pope there as the Antichrist. And they're there worshiping this guy. And these, you know, the Bible talks about Jesus says, you know, at one point he says, the time comes when they that kill you will think that they do God's service. That's what Catholicism is all about. You know, the Jesuit order, their, their motto is ad majorium de glorium, for the greater glory of God. You know, that's one of the battle cries of Roman Catholicism. Okay, so um, could this flood that is cast out of the devil's mouth, it's kind of interesting too because it's like another counterfeit of the Lord. In Revelation chapter 19, the Lord opens his mouth and a sharp two-edged sword comes out and he slaughters the Antichrist's army. So the devil... The flood that comes out of his mouth could it be that it's because he's the one speaking through the antichrist we'll see that in revelation 13 but he speaks through the antichrist and he says we have to go destroy these jews these wicked jews they're not even the true jews we're the true jews again i had somebody tell me that that uh, they saw where the pope was recently saying and i can't confirm this i'll have to confirm it but i've this goes right in with replacement theology which they believe but uh, the pope was Somebody they were saying that they heard the Pope say recently something about um, that uh, we are true Jews. You know, the, the Catholic to be a Catholic, you are Jewish, and things like this. He's talking about replacement theology. Uh, believe me, anybody that that says replacement theology is scriptural, they're lost and on their way to hell. I can tell you that. So, could the flood that's cast out of the devil's mouth be? the hordes of Roman Catholic armies that are going out. They did that in the past too, by the way, the Crusaders. All the Crusades were going and not just fighting Muslims, but they were also going out and killing Bible-believing Christians, heretics, you know, and also Jews. Because you see the Roman Catholic hordes, the Knights Templar especially, uh, their greatest desire and goal is to get the city of Jerusalem so that they can build that final temple. They're excited about that. They want the Antichrist. The final pope. Another study. Revelation chapter 12. A couple more verses to read here. Two more verses. We're going to finish up. Verse 16. Revelation 12, 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth, earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Uh, did this ever happen before, where the earth opened her mouth? Kind of funny again, the devil and the occultists, they... They will counterfeit this and they'll say, well, you know, Mother Earth and things like this. Well, the Bible never calls Earth our mother, but it does refer to as her here, which is kind of interesting. But what about this thing of the Earth opening her mouth? Go way back in your Old Testament to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 16. There's an interesting story here. Numbers chapter 16, verse 28 We'll start there. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. Stop right there for a minute. Moses says, Hereby know ye that I have sent, the Lord sent me. Excuse me. Hmm. Who's one of the two witnesses that shows up there to minister to the nation of Israel? Revelation chapter 11. Moses. Ministering in over there in, in uh, Israel, 
and they're killed in the streets of Jerusalem? Hmm. Verse 29. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. In other words, Moses is saying, hey, if I'm not God's man, if God hasn't sent me, then these people are just going to die a regular death. They'll die of old age, essentially. But if the Lord has sent me, you're going to see the Lord open the earth up and they're going to fall right down into hell. Isn't it interesting that there's so many sinkholes appearing all over the earth? I just saw this past week. There's, you know, ones in Siberia, these huge big holes. And they're going, wow, it's the whole, you know, it's, it's the sinkhole going down to hell. It's like a doorway going into hell. Sinkholes all over the place. Just find that interesting. Kind of like the Lord trying to drop some hints, you know. But uh, keep reading. Verse 31. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them and they, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Hmm. A lot of that same stuff is going on in the time of Jacob's trouble. Compare it. It's interesting. Moses is there. The devil casts out of his mouth a great flood. Could it be the people? The Roman Catholic hordes, the militaries of, the Roman, Catholic, of Roman Catholicism. The earth opens up the mouth, down in they go. The Bible talks about if anyone hurts, tries to hurt the two witnesses, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours them. Some interesting tie-ins there. Very interesting. But let's finish up here. Revelation chapter 12. Go back there in your Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I read two different things there. Um, show me in the Pauline epistles where we're supposed to keep the commandments of God in the context of and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Better than that, look over at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So we have the testimony of Jesus Christ as Christians. They'll have the testimony of Jesus Christ in the time of Jacob's trouble, but keep the commandments of God right there. Faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. You can't take that mark. Let me prove it to you. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, did it say if any lost man? It says if any man. Verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever, anybody, as this is for, receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Do we have to have patience as saints today in terms of salvation? No. I'm saved. I'm born again. What I do after this is just going to get me rewards in heaven. I'm not worried about losing my salvation. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Hmm. Compare that to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Went to make war with the remnant of her seed, the woman, Israel. Those Jews that are left that haven't been slaughtered. And you can see anti-Semitism growing right now in America. All these Jewish cemeteries that are being hit and bomb threats being called into Jewish centers and things around the country. It's starting. I remember they were interviewing this one 
Jewish woman. I see this stuff online, you know, there's prophetic update videos. I don't really spend time watching news channels and stuff, but, and this one woman, this Jewish woman, and she says, uh, she goes, well, I guess it's going to start here now. She meant Jews being persecuted. She's absolutely right. Spoke a little word of prophecy there, you know. The devil is starting the war. He's starting that hatred against the Jewish people. And it's going to spread to America, and those Jews better get back to, to Israel. Again, I saw some Jewish guy in, in this week, and he was like saying, I think that there's going to be a mass exodus of Jews leaving America to get over here to Israel. And isn't it interesting that they're building more housing for the Jews in the disputed territories? And all the Arabic Islamic nations are going, you have no right to build on that land. The Bible says they do. It's their land. The free woman. Galatians chapter 4. And it says there, cast out the bondwoman and her son. So the Jews have every right to say to the Palestinians, they have every right to say, get out, this is our land. The Bible said so. Hmm. It's really something, isn't it? Well, that's going to be it for Revelation chapter 12. Uh, like I said, this is a really interesting study. Um, I mean, there's like, uh, you know, occasionally I'll check a commentary or something like that, and a lot of these verses, I'm just like, there's just nothing. <laughs> you know, it's all just like they're trying to tell what's going to happen. And this instruction in righteousness thing is just like, it's rough going through these and trying to find this stuff. But uh, uh, great study. And um, I thank you all out there for your suggestions and, and input and things. I appreciate that. And uh, always appreciate your prayers. Uh, definitely, we, we need those. So i got another video I'm going to do real quickly. So I'm going to end this one here and just say thank you very much for watching. And we will see you in the next study, Revelation chapter 13. I'm not sure when it's going to come out yet because it takes a long time to put these together. A lot of scriptures to go over. Um, but uh, just uh, we'll see you in the next study.